AI generated art is super exciting technology. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still very much in the early adopter phase, but if you had told me when I was a kid you could type something into a computer and it would spit out an image, I would have said that sounds like pure science fiction. But it's here, and it's here for a lot of us, but some people are still on the wait list. Some people are still trying to get into Dolly, or they just don't have the funds to throw at something that is so immature. It's just not ready yet for prime time. It's not to say you can't get some usable information out of it, but it's just not there 100% of the time. So that's where something brand new comes into play, which you can run on your own computer, and it's 100% free. The software that I'm talking about is called Stable Diffusion. And just look at some of these images. It's absolutely insane what you can do with this software. If you had told me this came from a computer, I definitely wouldn't have believed it even just a year ago. Now this has been released under what's called a Creative ML Open Rail M license. I'm not gonna pretend to know what that means. If you wanna read more about it, they've linked to the information right here and I'll include that in the description. What's important to know is that this is a permissive license which allows for commercial and non-commercial usage. So if you're looking to get some images for your blog posts, this will do it for you. So it's free software and you can use it for your business. You're probably wondering, well, how do I get going? Well, until recently, it was very, very tricky. You had to know a little bit about the command line and install a bunch of stuff. And you had to use a computer with a Unix underpinning. So we're talking about either Mac OS or Linux here. Well, a couple of days ago, a piece of software called Diffusion B came out and it changes everything for Apple Silicon Mac users. Now, I know that's gonna weed a lot of you out, but if you do have a more recent Mac, you're definitely gonna wanna download this. It's 100% free and super easy to use. You can see here, it's a one-click installer, no dependencies or technical knowledge needed. Simply click on this button right here and you'll be ready to go. It is gonna download a very large file. It's a little over a gigabyte. And then once you actually try to launch Stable Diffusion for the first time or Diffusion B, you know, it's basically just running Stable Diffusion for you, it will download the model. The model is what generates all of the images and that is quite large. It's a little over four gigabytes. So you're looking at, you know, five and a half gigabytes or so to run this application, but once you see it in action, you are going to love it. All right, I'm loading up Diffusion B here right now. You can see in the lower left-hand corner, it says, Stable Diffusion requires a lot of RAM. 16 gigabytes is recommended. Close other applications for best speed. So this is a beefy program. I'm running a screen recording software while it's running, so keep that in mind. It might slow things down a little bit. I also have a pretty powerful computer. I've got a baseline Mac Studio, so it's gonna have a decent GPU in it. You're probably gonna wanna have a comparable machine. Uh, you know, I mean, really, you can run on it. Anything. It's just going to take a while to generate each image if you have a more underpowered, let's say like, uh, you know, MacBook Air or something, one of those uh, with maybe seven GPUs, it's going to take a lot longer. Overall, the GUI is exactly what you'd expect. We've got a field that we can type into and then a generate button. Let's go ahead and generate some images. All right, for my first prompt, I typed a dynamic island where the weather changes based on people's mood. Let's generate. Okay, so the image is generating right now. It's moving along pretty quickly, although it's not nearly as fast as what you'd expect from a cloud-based solution. Remember, this is happening entirely locally. Nothing is going off to the cloud. I could be in an airplane generating images right now and nothing would be affected. All right, there we go. Here is my dynamic island. You can see we've got two different weather states. All right, we're close. We're in the ballpark. We could change our prompt here if we wanted to dial this in a little bit more. All right, my next prompt is going to be a man holding a trophy shaped like an Apple logo over his head looking triumphant. But before I generate this, let's look at some of the advanced options that are available to us. Because with Diffusion B, we've got the ability to change the image dimensions for the first time. Here we've got 512 by 512, which is the default, but I could go all the way up to 768 by 768. Now, there are a few other options over here, which I'll describe briefly, but I want to point out that if you just max out everything, the image is going to take a very long time to generate. So just keep that in mind. Steps is the number of denoise steps. So the higher this number is, it's set right in the middle to begin with, but if you pump it up to 50, you'll have a less noisy image. I'm going to leave this at 25 just so that we keep the images coming in the video rather quickly. And then the guidance scale. What the guidance scale means is how close to your prompt should the image be? So if you want to be a little bit more loosey goosey, you could come down here and then maybe we get an image that doesn't quite follow what you wrote in the prompt. If you want to be more strict, you'd go higher and higher up. By default, it's set to 7.5 and I do think that is a sweet spot. 
All right, for this next image, I'm gonna do a 512 by 768, so we should see a wider image. Let's go ahead and generate. All right, there's our image, not exactly what I had in mind. We've got several people here. This guy has what appears to be an actual trophy, and then there is an apple on his head, so not an Apple computer logo on his head, just an actual apple. I'm gonna simplify my prompt here a little bit, and I'm gonna change the perspective so we get a tall image, and let's hit generate. So this one is a portrait of a man holding a trophy shaped like an Apple computer logo. These larger images are definitely taking way longer to generate, not as bad as when I just maxed everything out, but I would say rather than taking 20 seconds per image, it's probably taking closer to 45 or 50 seconds per image. All right, there we go, another kind of bad output. Now this is where you gotta just keep generating, right? You have to do this over and over again in order to get something that's usable. It might take you 100 iterations, but you just keep hitting that generate button and seeing what comes out on the other side. How about an illustration of a beautiful woman walking on the beach, sad because her friend has died? It's a real mood killer, isn't it? All right, that's beautiful. That absolutely captures what the prompt was. It even has a nice tasteful style of artwork. Mind blowing. So cool that this can be a thing. Now you may notice up at the top here, it says image to image. And if I click it, unfortunately, this is coming soon. But the idea here is going to be that you can use an image to generate another image. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for when using AI generated art. It'll allow you hopefully to keep the same characters from image to image. And that would be so amazing. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed Fusion B. If you do, make sure you leave me a comment down below and let me know that it worked out for you. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.